Welcome back and good evening if you've just joined us. This is Africa News Network First Fast Live with me, Cindy Mabi. Democratic Alliance leader Musi Maimane has requested a meeting with Deputy President Cyril Ramaphosa to avert the Cape Town water crisis. This comes as the disaster management plan kicked in today. Maimane says it's time to put political affiliations aside and focus on solutions. He wrote to Ramaphosa in his capacity as leader of government business. Ramaphosa last week announced that he intends to assemble a team to tackle the crisis and the DA leader has also assembled a disaster response team to push back at day zero. The leader also wants to discuss with Ramaphosa how best they can collaborate and tackle other water crises around the country. It remains to be seen now if national interests can be put ahead of individual or political party interests. Meanwhile, the blame game continues among officials of the national government, provincial government and the city council over the water crisis. The augmentation schemes are the responsibility of national government. Section 3 of the National Water Act is quite clear. There is no way the finances of any municipality in this country carries massive water augmentation schemes. National government has been slow in delivering those. The next augmentation schemes are only in 2022, and they simply have not delivered the water. They have now left us and many municipalities around this country. We are not the only one in this scenario. There are other municipalities in Northwest and the Eastern Cape as well. They've left us in a scenario where with the rate payers funding, we must try and fix what national government has failed to do. Even as authorities engage in the blame game for the water crisis, it's the Cape Town residents who continue to battle the crisis every day. I would in, in a, put it into a nutshell, blame the government for the, the condition we are in with the water crisis because we had to have built some more dams to accommodate us with water because they didn't foresee the problem coming. Things should have been put in place by then. I mean, there's a whole lot of options that is available that could have been um, put in place so that this doesn't have to matter. And if the water gets cut, then what is going to happen? And we saw this drought coming for how many years? It hasn't just been, it hasn't just started all of a sudden. And there's lots of countries going through droughts and stuff like that. So. I mean, we can learn from them. We can always take advice from some other country. And, and, but, I mean, look at the line over here, the people queuing up. It's unbelievable. And here's what the Day Zero Disaster Management Plan entails. 75% of the city's taps will be turned off except commercial areas, hospitals and informal dwellings. The remaining residents will have access to water at one of uh, the allocated 180 water collection spots. And collection spots will open for 12 hours per day, adjusted to 24 hours depending on the need at the locations. And collection spots will contain 50 to uh, 600 uh, taps each with pedestrian and uh, vehicle access at certain locations and the disaster plan will last for up to three months until the desalination plants and uh, winter rains replenish water supply. And joining us in studio, Sputnik Radao, Department of Water and Sanitation spokesperson. Good to have you. Thanks so much for joining us. Tolani Sotashe is ANC leader in the city of Cape Town. We'll start with you, Mr. Sotashe. A good evening to you. Just the question whether there is a maturity around this matter to put aside political affiliations and deal uh, with finding a lasting solution in this uh, water crisis. Uh, thank you for having me this evening and uh, also good evening to your listeners. Um, look, I think uh, there is a maturity uh, in terms of um, what we try to do for the people of Cape Town, uh, except to say that uh, we have to take responsibility in terms of what is happening. Um, because what, what people want to see at the end of the day uh, is to see a situation where all of us we work together to overcome the crisis that we have. But it's unfortunate that the government of the day in the Western Cape uh, uh, keeps on shifting the blame, even when it's not necessary to do that. I was listening now to J.P. Smith, and then I was asking myself, what does J.P. Smith have to do with the issue um, of water? Because is the responsibility, is the issue of uh, security within the city, which is still the challenge. But let me come to the question that we have raised. Look, we, we have been responding to a lot of queries that are coming from different constituencies here. And what we are experiencing in Cape Town, besides the issue of whether we do have enough augmentation schemes, but the underground infrastructure, bulk infrastructure that we have now has aged. 
And I can tell you right now, a number of leakages that we are picking up uh, um, uh, really needs our agent attention. Mm. Because the kind of pipes that you have underground is the old asbestos pipes, which now do not actually um, uh, respond to the pressure and the volume. All right, let's get, a, let's get a, Mr. Sotasha, just stay with us. We have Mr. Sputnik Rata, our Department of Water and Sanitation spokesperson. You can talk to us about uh, the aging infrastructure and how dire this particular situation is. Why has it not been addressed until now? Well, the issue of um, uh, infrastructure that's aged um, is, is something that is of concern to all of us, and I think Mr. Sotashi is correct, but basically it's also married to the fact that it's got to now deal with high numbers of people who moved into the urban areas, whereas the infrastructure is meant for a smaller amount of people. And that has caused a serious problem in terms of just how the, 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 that um, uh, infrastructure operates, because then the pressure is even higher. But basically when we look at also the fact that um, the, in, in, the, in the, in the issues of, of infrastructure development are, are actually uh, cross-sectoral because as, as a department we are responsible for the bulk infrastructure that must deliver the bulk as well as uh, local government that then delivers the, the, the reticulation. So there is always that, that kind of cross-section. Yeah, and, uh, but how, yeah, we, there's also been, uh, you know, as Mr. Sotasha was saying about the blame game in terms of the provincial government saying national is withholding resources and not uh, giving them the necessary capacity to deal with the water crisis. What, what is your, your approach to this particular crisis in relation to the criticism to national government? Well, it's interesting because, you know, Minister has, has been meeting with the mayor, the mayor of uh, uh, the city of Cape Town over time. And we have been having, in, in fact, one of our DDGs is sitting on the advisory committee of of the, of the city of Cape Town on the drought issue. So that kind of um, um, cooperation exists. So I think we can put that aside. But basically, a lot of work is being done together. A, a reconciliation st strategies have been co put together, but as well as other current issues that, that are in place, including when we put up uh, the, the restrictions, when we gazetted the restrictions, the city also came in with their localized restrictions, which are looking at how they can be able to, to, to assist you know, consumers where, from wherever, be it uh, uh, farmers or domestic or industrial, to reduce uh, uh, consumption, which is the critical issue that, that, that is actually leading to where a lot of the water that is being consumed is not in line with the guidelines that we are looking at from the national department point of view as well as from the city itself. Okay, we'll come back and talk about the rationing and how uh, to conserve water. But uh, Reso Tashe, the ANC as in the opposition, of course, in the Western Cape, uh, equally being criticized that it is increasingly difficult to function in this uh, coalition government, but more so that uh, there are all efforts made to, to ensure that the government of the Western Cape, DA in this case, fails uh, in your reaction to the crisis in, in Cape Town with the narrative that the majority of disadvantaged people had lived with lack of uh, water availability for, for years. Why must this be prioritized? How do you respond to that? Well, we, we can't be blamed for the failures of the government of the day in the Western Cape. We are not in government in the Western Cape. The Democratic Alliance must not only come out and claim victories when they are achievements. They must also be able to lead, even in these difficult times. They must be able to take the responsibility in terms of what is happening in the Western Cape. What we have viewed around this particular crisis, one can conclude to say that at some certain point, people can have a conclusion to say, it looks like it's a man-made situation. Because um, I can tell you right now, national government has been trying to intervene in the situation, in particular in the city of Cape Town. I do have a letter with me that was coming from the National Department of Water and Sanitation uh, as early as December, trying to assist the city of Cape Town to overcome the current situation. Is the mayor of Cape Town who, who responded by saying, well, you can just delay your intervention, we do have other ways of dealing with the situation. When they were asked what is the plan to deal with the situation, there is no plan. And also at the same time, the national government must take the blame for the city of Cape Town not, not, not having the plan 
Okay, we'll let the Department of Water and Sanitation respond on that. Please stay on the line with us, uh, Resotasha. We have Edward Mitole, political analyst. Good evening to you and thanks for joining us. What do you make out of all of this uh, uh, political footballing and uh, blame game around the uh, provincial government in the Western Cape and national? Uh, good evening, Cindy, and good evening to your viewers at home. Uh, Cindy, I must say it is very disappointing at this point in time for the government of the Western Cape to be pushing the blame to the national government when all these years the national government has supported the city of Cape Town to capacitate it in terms of backwater. The government has given them uh, around 11 dams and has just completed uh, a, a, another dam, you know, in terms of capacitating the city of West, uh, uh, Cape Town with backwater. Uh, the, the city, you must understand that uh, this is a, a Zionist plot to control water resources and profit from it. Um, there are so many companies in the city of Cape Town and in the whole government of the Western Cape that have been profiting from the uh, water supplies in the Western Cape. Uh, Mr. Batole, we'll come back to you. Re Ratao, is, is there, in your view, a well-orchestrated plan here uh, to enrich only a few of those that are supplying water in, in light of this crisis? The issue of uh, people commercializing the situation is, 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 is a reality, but we are looking at it mainly from the point of view of the need to maximize compliance monitoring, which we, we have been doing. We have actually added more of our uh, uh, colleagues from other provinces, particularly head office, to go and bolster the capacity of, of monitoring in our uh, provincial office in the city, in the, in the Western Cape. But that, when we combine it with the efforts that we uh, do uh, jointly with the city of Cape Town, uh, they are compliance monitoring people as well to look at the illegal activities within the city. I think there's a very good working relationship. And for us, it is not about who does it. It is about that do they comply. And that is our point of, of departure. And can you, can you uh, confirm what Mr. Mersotasha was saying, that the, the mayor of Cape Town rejected the intervention or a plan or some form of assistance in trying to deal with this matter? Well, I think he could be referring particularly to the issue of the desalination plant that we had uh, started the process of, of assisting the city to, to acquire. But uh, we, were, we were asked to hold on, on to it because they want to always look at whether they can optimize groundwater uh, 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 utilization. So that is where things are at the moment. Mm. And, and part of the plan, would that include people, for example, not uh, filling up their swimming pools or can they use water from, you know, if it really gets that dire in the meantime or in the interim uh, while we're trying to avoid or avert this uh, crisis? That is included within the, the, the water restrictions that are in place. And basically it, it, it has got a, a number of levels. And right now, uh, in, in the last, uh, in, in the revision of the water restrictions that we gazetted, what we also included there is the issue of, 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 of groundwater because it was only speaking, we were only speaking to surface water. But now we see a, a very great shift towards the issue of ground, uh, groundwater. So we need to make sure that that doesn't also get uh, 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 over-abstracted. Mm. And Mr. Sotasha, in the, the Western Cape, I suppose Cape Town uh, mainly, in the main, which areas would you say that uh, residents tend to be delinquent and not necessarily follow uh, the water restrictions and therefore ag ag aggravating the situation even further? Well, uh, the report is very clear to us, uh, uh, Cindy. If you look at the report of Cape Town, the top, the top 100 abusers of water, you will find them in these affluent areas, your Constantia, your Blobberg, and the city centre. And the city has been dragging their feet to deal with these people because the situation is that uh, those who must suffer, they must be at the receiving end, are the people who are living in this uh, uh, historical disadvantaged communities. And also, I want to mention this point that, I want to qualify the point that I say this might be a kind of a made-made situation because the city was, was, was warned about the situation 10, 15 years ago. There is a report that indicates that, that
that you should do ABC. All the things that now the city is busy with were the things that were mentioned to the city of Cape Town 10 years ago. And they ignored the professional advice. They ignored the engineers of the city to say there won't be um, any kind of a water crisis in Cape Town. Their dams are full. Rain is doing very well. Now today we are faced with this situation. Lastly, we have a reservoir here in Newlands. We were tipped by the residents of Newlands that this reservoir has been leaking for the last seven years. And then we've been losing one million liters a day. You tell me that is that national government that is responsible for that reservoir. The maintenance of this infrastructure is a responsibility of the city of Cape Town. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the allocate, budget allocation for repairs and maintenance, it leaves much to be desired. All right, Mr. Edward Mitole, a political analyst, are you of the view that the only reason why we're talking about this matter is because it affects the most affluent in uh, the city of Cape Town? Can you hear me, Edward? I was saying, do you concur with Mr. Sotashe that uh, this has now become national news headlines because it affects the most affluent in society? Yeah, I'll, I'll put that to you. I think we have uh, a technical um, a disconnect there. Uh, but would you say, I mean, there's been water shortages. There's been complaints about water access or scarcity for, for years. Why has it become so topical now in your view? Well, uh, for us as a department, you must remember that we look at, you know, the global view. And for us, because we've been dealing with the issue of, of, of the drought over the last three, four years, and especially where, if you remember, KZN, Limpopo, Free State and the Northwest were very hard hit by this. So uh, what we would want to see is actually um, some of the best practices that allowed us to be able to, 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 to come back from the brink uh, in those provinces, come and be practiced in the, in, the, in, the, in the Western Cape so that we can be able to, uh, you know, have a coherent way of responding to, to, to Okay, to but what, what is the plan? If you can give us timelines, what do you do from now onwards? Well, there are, th there are four particular strategies that we are looking at. And as, as I indicated earlier, it was the one of, of desalination. It will always be on the table because it is part of the water mix uh, within the country anyway. It is the issue of groundwater optimization, but that has got to move uh, together with the issue of, of ensuring that there is not over obstruction. There is the issue of uh, water conservation and, and, and water demand management, which speaks to the individual to say how much am I able to actually, uh, how much consumption am I able to, to reduce? And ultimately we are looking at encouraging the issue of uh, optimizing reuse of, of grey water. Mm. Okay, so there is a, a, a glimmer of hope that we could avert uh, day zero, in your view. Is that the guarantee that you're giving? From the department's point of view, we're not even operating from the, uh, from the point of view of a day zero. Our, our operations are such that we, we're looking at the system not failing. And for us, for the system not to fail is for us to be able to get to the uh, next rainy season in the, in, the, in, the, in the winter with water still in the pipes. Mm. And, and pol politically speaking, Reso Dasha, why shouldn't we believe that the ANC is being opportunistic in this sense and in trying to just squarely put the blame on the Western Cape or the uh, Democratic Alliance uh, that are governing <clears throat> that province? Leadership comes with responsibility. You know, when you are, when you are given a mandate, by electorate to govern, so you must take the responsibility. So we can't be accused as ANC when we play our oversight role. In this, in this instance, we are not only playing our oversight role, we are involved in terms of finding the solution. It's us who have been engaging national government and also encouraging that all spheres of government must come together. People that can be blamed for being opportunistic is the leader of the Democratic Alliance, Musi Maimane is politicizing the issue of the water crisis in the Western Cape. For him alone, and take the decision that he's going to take control of the situation in the Western Cape, it actually undermines the institutions that we have put in place democratically to, to deal with the issues. So I do not think that it's fair that the ANC is becoming opportunistic when, when it deals with this issue. If we were opportunistic, we would sit back and become uh, uh, armchair critics. But in this instance, we are involved. We are there on the ground to, to make uh, 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 the kind of education awareness to people that we must be able to conserve water. It's us who are responding.
responding to all these calls that people are making that here are the leakages, we need solutions. We are really putting pressure on officials to do the best that they can in terms of making sure that they respond to the complaints that are lodged by the citizens of Cape Town to, K I mean to, to the administration. All right, I believe we have Mr. Edward Mitole, a political analyst, back on Skype with us. Earlier I was asking that, is this now becoming topical because it's affecting the most affluent in society? And if that is the case, and of course it mirrors the inequality in terms of uh, service distribution, etc., in, in society. Uh, I agree with you, Cindy. Exactly. The blame should be going to the ANC government for allowing the, these uh, profiteers. Uh, you know, it has allowed white monopoly capital to capture the control and ownership of water supply. I will ask you one question, Cindy. Who owns water resources in South Africa? Who owns our water in South Africa today? It is white monopoly capital. The Department of Water doesn't even know how many dams there are there. The people who own our land are the same people who own our water in South Africa. Uh, if, if, if you ask me how many dams there are in this country, I will not tell you because there is no exact figure. Most of the figures are being hidden by white monopoly capital because the white farmers and the people who own water companies are the ones who profiteer from the control of water All right, let's get the resources. facts from the Department of Water and Sanitation. Please stay on the line, Edward. Do, does the department indeed know? Have you had your um, uh, audits done to know exactly what the, the, the level of resources we have and who owns it? Well, you must remember that um, government has got its own infrastructure. And for that, it can be able to take responsibility. I would not have the numbers right now in terms of how many dams the, 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 the department is responsible for in total, but uh, that, that becomes one of the things. But al also, you must remember that there, there are uh, um, municipal dams that would then be additional to the dams that we are responsible for. And all, there are also private dams that could be allowed for in terms of water use license applications that could have been issued. So all of those would then give a total picture of what the status is. Obviously, there is always uh, an opportunity for people to, to sidestep the law. And that is why compliance monitoring becomes very critical because there are places where you find that there are illegal dams that are operating, there are illegal obstructions, and so on and so forth. And that could add to the mix and, and, and create the kind of uh, uh, unsavory situation that we might find ourselves yeah, in. Yeah, so, so Tasha, are you, are you aware of, I mean, in a country where there is a reality about water shortage, uh, we've seen uh, the, the, the impact of drought as well, that there are those that own private dams uh, and uh, where, where as it should be distributed as an essential uh, requirement? Well, I'm not aware of that. In fact, uh, it, it's also part of the discussion that we had in our conference in December that uh, the ANC really we must be able to resolve to make sure that um, these individuals have, that have uh, absolute power in terms of the means of this country must be able really to bring back these kind of uh, water rights to to the people that they supposed to be the ones that are having these uh, water rights. So, so one cannot dismiss that particular point. It's a valid point that has been raised, and I think government is, is going to begin to look at that. And uh, until we, as people of this country, are take ownership of the resources that we have, we are going to be continue to be exploited by individuals who are actually commercializing the resources that we have. I mean, look now, in the situation of Cape Town, all of a sudden, uh, Tony Leon is coming from nowhere. He's, uh, he's, a, he's a PR of Cape Town to tell people of Cape Town that it is not raining and he's getting a lot of money by just telling people of Cape Town it's not raining. And then these are the kind of things that concerns us as African National Congress in the city of Cape Town that this situation now is being commercialized, and I can understand why Musi Maiman is so agitated to take over, because he knows that the issue of dealing with these water desalination plants and uh, your augmentation schemes, they come with a big pass, and 
Some companies coming from Israel, they've been lined up to benefit out of the situation that our people are finding All right, themselves Mr. in. Mr. Gasha, we'll engage you on that uh, once we have, if you can forward the details and we can explore that further. Uh, Mr. Edward uh, Mitole, political analyst, we're going to let you go. But before we do, just very briefly, and how we avoid a potential civil um, uprising, if you will, particularly uh, between the haves and have-nots in light of this water crisis. Cindy, there is, there is no solution in sight unless the ANC government clamps down on these thugs who come from those nations of the, 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 the world to root our resources in South Africa. The only solution that the ANC can come up with is to change the structure of the economy to allow for the ordinary people of South Africa own and control their resources. Yeah. There okay. is we're a gonna... war coming in. All right, uh, Edward, we're going to leave it there very briefly, Reratao, that it will not lead to a complete shutdown of water supply come day zero, or we, we, we won't even get there. For us, we will not get there. But obviously, there is responsibility on all sides. But in the ultimate, it is about reduction of consumption because the reality is that over the last three to four years of the drought, the Western Cape has seen less and less rainfall. Okay, we're going to leave it there. Uh, such a great pleasure to have you. I almost called you legendary. <laughs> uh, as Putnik Ratao, Department of Water and Sanitation spokesperson in studio, Edward Mitole, political analyst, and Kolani Sotashe, ANC leader in the city of Cape Town. We take a break, and thanks for watching. We'll see you shortly.